Good morning, everybody. This is Brian Noble with the weekly update for the S&P, Dow, uh, NASDAQ and the Euro dollar. Uh, it's certainly been a volatile week since we last uh, spoke uh, last Monday and the, with the two-way volatility in the US indices and the Euro breaking its 50-day moving average uh, finally having traded sideways for, for most of the previous uh, two months. So certainly got a lot of uh, action for traders, which was badly needed. Uh, the first chart I'm showing you here is the S&P. As you can see, the S&P last uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, broke the 50-day moving average. It was the first time we've had a break in that moving average uh, since the end of May. Uh, we got quite an aggressive sell-off uh, with a double bottom. We, we hit a low on Thursday of 31.98 in the December contract and 32.06 on Friday. And then just out of nowhere, we see a 160-point rally in the, in the S&P futures from, or sorry, from Friday's 32.06 low. Uh, to an overnight high so far of 33.61. Um, just more talk about, about stimulus, more talk about a vaccine. Um, I think, you know, as regards the, uh, the, the virus, when the CDC came out with a report saying that the mortality rate for over 70 was, 90, uh, was five and a half percent, I think that's given a lot of comfort. Uh, you can see in the States that Florida has gone to level three, so they've opened up hotels bars, restaurants, and full occupancy because the cases have, uh, have collapsed since the peak in mid-July. And I think that's given a lot of confidence. I think on top of that, if we swing over to Europe, uh, the fact that Merkel and Macron both came out and said, despite the rising cases, they're not going to shut the economy down. So, um, so I think this virus, while still a big problem, is not as deadly as it was before. And I think there's a lot of comfort. I think going by watching uh, Trump's uh, press conferences closely over the last couple of weeks, he definitely has something up his sleeve. Uh, there's no doubt I think some sort of a vaccine is going to be rolled out ahead of the election. And if this fact, if the uh, virus is not as strong as it was before, well, then we, they might need as uh, potent a vaccine and, it, you know, might end up being like the flu where you get it every year. So that's hoping to be the best case uh, scenario. Against that, I think the S&P is taking a lot of comfort from that, uh, uh, though, that news uh, since Friday. Uh, we've had a massive move, as I said, since Friday lunchtime. And yet, from Friday's close uh, in the cash at 32.96 uh, to yesterday's 33.36 low, we've left a massive gap, as you can see here. So if, even if I just put it up on the five minute chart, just to give you a better idea of how big this gap is. Uh, yeah, you can see it here. So, and, and all gaps in the S&P get filled, whether it takes a day or two or a few weeks, they all get filled, even going back to uh, the 35% sell-off uh, back in February, March, all those gaps are eventually filled uh, by, you know, almost by the July timeframe. So they don't take that long to, uh, to, to fill these gaps. So I trade a lot of these gap plays. Uh, the S&P is just closed last night at the 50-day moving average. Uh, can, you know, given the level and given the risk coming into the election in six weeks, I still think the S&P is going to find it difficult to uh, to break uh, or to, to rally much further. Really needs to get above 34.10 just here uh, before I'd start to turn property bullish again. Today I'm a seller, <coughs> excuse me, today I'm a seller from, this is in the futures contract from 33.58 to 33.75 uh, with a probably 10 handle uh, stop on that. If I'm stopped out, I will, uh, and irrespective of that, I will be an aggressive seller from 33.95 to 34.10, risking 10 points on the top side. Um, against that, I think the risk reward will be quite good. Uh, on the buy side, given the level of the gap from last Friday, I think anywhere near, initially near 33.10 to 33.20 is a good buy, uh, looking for 15 to 20 points uh, rally. Other than that, I think the S&P is going to be plenty of two-way trading, so with pseudos traders as opposed to just being one way, as we saw from here from, from March, when it just went all the way up to the, the peak just below uh, 35.50. Right, moving over to the uh, Dow. You can see the big move the, again with the gap here. If you just, I'll just throw up the five minute chart, show you the gap. And here, huge gap. So, you know, from yesterday's low of just above 27,350 to the close of uh, 27,175 on Friday. Again, this gap will, will attract uh, attention and will attract buyers if we do get down there. Uh, the difference between this and the S&P is that both the NASDAQ and the Dow closed over their 50-day moving average. As you can see, the 50-day moving average is 27.546. Uh, we, we've traded up above 25.700 uh, this morning, 
back down to 20, just below 27,500 and we're back at 27,6 as I send this uh, um, video out. So I think that the Dow, um, sell wise, I'll be a seller, just like the S&P, kind of 27,700 to 27,900, risking 250 points on the top side. Uh, you gotta use smaller trade size with bigger stops, given the volatility, especially the fact that we rallied a thousand points from uh, from Friday Friday lunchtime. And on the buy side, I'd be a reasonably aggressive uh, buyer anywhere near the twenty seven thousand two hundred uh, area uh, to twenty seven thousand. Again, risking a couple of hundred points on it. Just going over to the uh, the Nasdaq. The Nasdaq was. Uh, you know, it was weak yesterday um, and then turned around in the last hour, it just surged uh, to close up, up 1.9% uh, on reasonably heavy volume. Uh, again, we broke the 50 day moving average, which is 11,240. Uh, we closed 120 points above that. So it was a reasonable close above it. Uh, this 50 day moving average on any set off today should attract buying. So I'd be a reasonably aggressive buyer from 11,170 to 11,250. Uh, risking a close just below 11,000. Uh, on the top side, I still think it's going to be difficult to get above this channel here at 11,500. So anywhere around 11,500, I'd be a seller, risking 150 points. Again, smaller size given the uh, the volatility, but we all have added volatility as traders. And finally, just switching over to the uh, the euro. We we're talking about last week about a break in the, the you know, test the 50-day moving average, which we did. That was the first break we've had uh, since uh, early June, uh, and then we got a reasonably quick set off down to just above 116. We're kind of hovering around the 116.60, uh, 11680 area this morning. I still think to get bullish, this 50 day moving average is rising, so 11780 is going to be good resistance. I think first time up, you should be given the number of times we tested a 50 day moving average uh, here. Uh, and each time we rallied off it, I think we should see good resistance. So I'd be a reasonably aggressive seller anywhere between 117.60 to 118.10, risking 30 points uh, uh, from the, the top of that uh, kind of 118.40. Uh, on the downside, I still think here is going to attract really strong, aggressive buying from sort of 114.50 uh, to 114. Uh, on that, you can see we had you know double top here, and then we broke out of it, and then we consolidated it, and then we doubled and tested that 120. Uh, in early September. So just to recap, Euro a sell against the uh, 117.80 uh, and a buy 114 to 114.80 uh, and aggressively so on the buy side, uh, just a small seller on the, on the top side. Uh, thank you for listening and uh, I'll be back to you next week.